Hello, and welcome to my development of a music curriculum. As per the instructions requested, I have dreamed and come up with a total curriculum that I hope, if put in place, would be very effective. It draws from current curricula that have proven to be effective, and I've also added some personal ideas about the total curriculum that I think would further music education if all the pieces fell just right. So let's proceed to the framework of my proposed curriculum. I don't believe the mission of my curriculum is radical. I feel it asks for more than what is currently in place. Music education should be present in all levels of study, elementary, middle, and high school, for all students. All students should take general music courses throughout their pre-post-secondary education with opportunities to further their knowledge through specialized and performance-based classes. If we break this down, you'll see that these core strands are not unique. Traditional general music courses are very common. They're used primarily in elementary music as required courses, and they are offered electively at the middle and high school levels as potential credits for satisfying a fine art component. You'll see as we proceed that I'd like to reorganize the approach to traditional general music. Specialized music classes, such as music theory, are not new either and are present at the middle school level, but are seen more often at the high school level. Here, too, I will propose a non-traditional way of offering these types of classes. Performance-based classes, such as band and choir, are the frontline courses associated with music education. Because performing has been a constant focus of music education in America, it has been honed into an efficient machine. Although there is always improvement that can be made, such as incorporating more of the national standards, I feel they are well suited in their current state, so I won't be reorganizing the placement of these classes in the total curriculum. You will, however, for contextual reasons, see where performance-based classes align with the traditional general music classes and specialized music classes. Going back to the mission, you'll see that all three course types will be offered at all three levels, elementary, middle, and high school. In addition, you'll notice that traditional general music classes, as well as specialized music classes, will be, for lack of a better word, required for students to take, while performance-based music classes will be offered as electives for students who are showing interest in performing. Finally, I would never dream of deviating from the work that has so diligently been set up for us to use, so all of these classes will be taught with the national standards as a guide. Let's now turn our focus to the structure of the elementary music curriculum. The elements of music taught in the elementary music classroom have been carefully and appropriately organized and developed. Here is a list of those common elements. The way in which students learn and experience these elements is still developing. But here are the standards. Effective teachers use combinations of singing, playing, listening, creating, and moving to efficiently teach these concepts. Although the what and how carry through all of the elementary classes, I will propose a different and hopefully better way of achieving the same outcome, which is a constantly growing understanding and appreciation of music. The introduction of elementary students into ensemble playing often starts at fifth grade for students who desire to perform. This benchmark has found its tradition based on the development of children. Because they are usually electives, all fifth and sixth graders take general music, while some enroll in a performance-based class. If fifth and sixth graders in general are capable of being successful in a performance-based class, I think they are ready for, and would benefit more from, a specialized music class rather than the traditional general music class. If this is the case, then I feel there should be a change in the traditional curriculum to reflect this. For grades kindergarten through fourth, I think the traditional general music class is very appropriate. First of all, it effectively teaches concepts in graduated levels, every year adding more complex components. It of course uses the national standards. If you turn to any lesson in the Silver Burdette, for example, 
it tells you which standards are met in each lesson. And, of course, teachers have the ability to adjust their teaching to meet the needs of their students. I believe all of these are valid points for the traditional general music class. As I previously stated, there is an inconsistency between performing and non-performing students at the 5th and 6th grade level. I think it is easy to see why a large gap is found in the middle school, where students either participate in an ensemble or cease to pursue, pursue music. I think this starts in the late elementary and can be fixed through a restructuring of courses. In addition to performance-based classes, I suggest offering specialized music classes that have a focus while still teaching the elements of music. This will maintain knowledge and musicianship that can be carried into middle school. Although these classes could potentially be performance-based, the focus will be the content rather than having an end of performance. Middle school students get to choose some of their classes as part of the preparation to entering high school. For music, this means those students are given the option to avoid music. This is a serious mistake. I propose that students be required to take music, but be given choices to maintain their autonomy. With the addition of using technology to make and manipulate music, at the middle school level, the concepts being taught, as well as the methods being used to teach them, stay the same. However, I propose that the course offerings reflect the shift at the late elementary level. In my curriculum, middle school students can still enroll in performance-based classes, but all of the students will take a specialized music class. Once again, giving them choices will maintain autonomy and hopefully pique interest in students and incur a desire to develop their knowledge, appreciation, and musicianship. Once again, the specialized music courses are not performance-based, but use a focus to teach musical concepts in a way that aligns with national standards. At the high school level, the gap between performing and non-performing students is accentuated. Students who didn't pursue musical studies in elementary and middle school often see music only in the performance light and avoid courses because they are quote-unquote not good at it. And it is very easy for students to do this because many high schools don't require music but instead require a fine arts credit that can be attained through non-music classes. Even if students wanted to participate in music, the non-performance-based classes are limited often to music appreciation and or music theory. Once again, what we want them to learn and how that happens stays the same, but we can give students more options with specialized courses instead of catering to performers only. There are many specialized courses listed here. Not all of them have to be offered or offered all of the time. A rotation would allow students to prepare their course schedule to include the class that most interests them. Although a specialized music class would be required, giving students power through choice, 11 logic technique, can create a classroom environment conducive to learning. With this curriculum, you should notice an underlying theme. Consistently requiring students to enroll in a specialized music class eliminates the gap that occurs between levels of education and between performing and non-performing students. Although requirement can often be viewed negatively, pairing it with options can help maintain interest in music throughout the grades. Having all students continue their education in music can achieve several goals. Firstly, the total curriculum should provide a more linear development of content knowledge, avoiding redundancies and gaps in comprehension and retention. Secondly, an experience of music over a broader time span can get most, if not all, students above the amateur level, creating either aficionados or future professionals. Lastly, I believe a curriculum of this design would produce more lifelong musicians, appreciators, and supporters of music and music education. That, in turn, would emphasize the importance of music and help to secure or ground it as a core subject within education. Overall, if we can get students to be comfortable in the music studies and provide them with better opportunities, we can have a program that breeds success.